Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. My name is Miriam Smith-Stevens, and I happen to be the sister of one of our contributors today and story shares today, Hope Wright, and sister-in-law to her husband, Willie Wright. And they are historians and interpreters and actors at Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. Today, we're going to bring to you an important topic about the significance of Juneteenth and the music in the freedom movement of Juneteenth. So without further ado, I'll allow the rights to introduce themselves. And then the question for today is, how does music relate to the movement of Juneteenth and the freedom movement? Take it away. <laughs> Hi, my name is Hope Wright, and I've been an employee at the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation for um, 39 years, all total, 25 years full time. And um, my name is Willie Wright. I've been an actor, interpreter, script writer um, at Colonial Williamsburg for about 20 years. Somewhere in between there, I was an actor at Mount Vernon, which is, uh, is the home of George Washington. Uh, um, and, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, very important um, before we talk about music and before we talk about Juneteenth, but just to, to look at what was coming to an end um, on Juneteenth. Um, since this country's inception, um, enslavement has been a part of that. And what that actually means is the largest forced migration of African people through the, the, the Middle Passage, just the, the, the terrible um, journey to to get here of African people where a lot of lives were, were lost just in the transport here. And then once those Africans arrived here, um, they were put into a system that was perpetual, meaning there was no end to it. The status of enslavement was passed through the mother. So if your mother was enslaved, you were enslaved. You were marked before you even came into this world. And if you're an enslaved woman, you're birthing your own replacement. It was hereditary, it was race-based, in which only people of African descent would be held, held as enslaved people, and the enslaved people themselves were classified as property, and it would fluctuate between chattel and real estate. So you have to have all of that in mind before you can get to that coming to an end. We're talking about a system that survived for almost 300 years, and that was the law. Um, within the United States. Um, okay. So when you think about living through that and that coming to an end, but just the living through that, music becomes a release for people. Mm -hmm. And you cannot look at Black music during or since without knowing, you know, that in all that creativity and, and, and talent, you know, it's born out of some horrific circumstances and where that would have been sometimes the only release that you had if you are a mother separated you know from your child if you are a child separated from from your parents siblings apart you know that has <clears throat> certain meaning a lot of times people want you know the music without the struggle but you're not mm -hmm. giving you know the full reverence you know, and respect to the music if you try to separate it from why and how it was created. They say that great art is made through struggle. And mm. I can't tell you a struggle that's worse than being enslaved for generation after generation, right? So that pain that you hear in their voices is real. Um, from grown people singing that have less rights than a two-year-old white child. Mm -hmm. that is singing yeah. and then you know speaking of black music coming from that struggle and from the theft of their labor and that also stretches to the theft of their music the blues mm -hmm. created out of struggle that's black mm -hmm. people rock and roll created by black people mm -hmm. and then to be taken and 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 some somebody to try it on like a mask and take credit for it you know what i'm saying and and now we have juneteenth we were the only people, African people, that were enslaved legally. No Irish people were ever legally enslaved in this country. Mm -hmm. So let's not even have that conversation. But when we do get a holiday like this, it's not strictly for us, just like the enslavement was strictly for us. 
Um, so the struggle continues. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, we're not going to sit and pat ourselves on the back. You know, Juneteenth being acknowledged is beautiful, but um, we're the most incarcerated, saying, saying the end of slavery, the 13th Amendment. Mm -hmm. says neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist except as punishment for a crime. So mm -hmm. then let's examine what are we calling crime? Because when emancipation came, they were locking us up for vagrancy, even though we had no place to go and no money. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. the only thing that this country has ever done just for Black people was enslave us because after civil rights, then here come immigrants. The um, civil rights bill was passed in 1964, 65, the borders and everything opened up. So, um, yeah, we still got a ways to go, but happy Juneteenth. I want to thank you both for just taking the time today to share with me, um, sharing the message and the history and the understanding of Juneteenth and how important it is for all of us as Americans to um, to realize that we're still in that fight for freedom. We're still in that fight for civility, for human Absolutely. rights, for dignity, mm -hmm. for um, Social just justice, making, activism. yes, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. And that music can play a part and is a, a, a part and a tool and resource that was used for people who were enslaved to really fight for something they could control, the dignity of singing, the dignity of playing an instrument, the dignity of using their own expression to get through in that um, horrific time. So again, thank you so much for your time today, for sharing the rights. Any parting words? <laughs> uh, thank you for having us. And um, if there's any need for clarification, clarification for anything says I'm said I'm more than happy to clarify. It. Yeah, thank you for having us. And um, I would leave you um, with a book that talks about that time immediately after um, emancipation, um, where enslaved families were trying to reconnect um, with each other. It's called Help Me to Find My People uh, by Dr. Heather Andrea Williams. And um, I think that'll give all of you some insight into what was taken away during enslavement, but um, how enslaved people still held on and um, what they did to try to um, find family um, afterwards and how that continued even until the early 20th century. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for listening to our segment and our chapter story three, Music and the Movement and Freedom for Juneteenth and Beyond.